Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Let's continue with our episode. In the previous episode, we have added the catalog repository and catalog service. So today in this tutorial together, we are going to cover how we can create the category and how we can list the categories, right? So let's jump into the source code. So here in the source code, you can see we have created our uh, catalog repository and we have created our catalog service as well as, right? So you can see we have not added any things right here in the catalog service. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Let's say we are, we are going to cover first the, the repository part. Then uh, then it will be easier for us to, to handle this rep, uh, catalog service. All right. So here in the catalog repository, let's try to add a couple of functions. Those are the functions going to help us to, to uh, create and listing the, the categories. Right. So here in the catalog repository, let's try to add some functions quickly. So those are the functions going to help us to, to uh, create the category and the listing out the categories. Right. So I'm going to add the functions quickly and I will explain it how or what are the things we need to implement accordingly. Okay. All right, so here you can see we have added all these functions to handle our category operations. So where we are creating the category, find categories, find category by ID, delete and edit categories, right? So you can see we are, where while we are creating the category, we are accepting some kind of the, the entities, right? The domain, right? So domain, the category. Each and every function are accepting some kind of parameters. Uh, as an example, for creating the category, we are accepting the, uh, the category entity, right? So that is we are defining here. And in return, if this goes well, then we are, we are returning some kind of the error as a kind of nil, right? Or if something is going wrong, then we are returning this uh, error. So we, we don't want, while we are creating the category, you, you need to return this category at all, right? So we, we don't want that, right? So only, only we are care about, we are creating the category. If everything goes well, then it should not supposed to return any error, right? The similar way, we are following the same pattern for, for everyone, right? Uh, and here we are not accepting any kind of offset and limit because the categories, it, it's not going to be more than uh, maybe maybe more than 500, right? Or something like that. So, but eventually if you if you think like this category is going to be more than that, all right? Then you can, you can introduce the delimit also. Based on the business use case, you can uh, define the delimit in terms of like uh, maybe, uh, maybe offset from zero to, uh, zero to 10, all right? or maybe something like that. This is the way we can we can define the offset and limit, right? But in, in our case, it's not required. All right, so here you can see it is giving the error because this functions, these are the functions we have assigning right here. We have declared right here in the catalog repository interface, but we have not implemented here, right? Because this catalog repository, it's going to be uh, comply this one, right? This interface. So if we need to comply, then definitely we need to uh, implement all these functions. Right, then let's try to implement it, right? So if you're using Goland, then definitely you can get the automatic options for implement to the missing methods. So if you hover right here, then you can see in this uh, particular option, right? Then you can click on right here, then you can get all the uh, missing methods right here, right? Cool, so it seems like all the codes are, are, are in place. So we are going to simply adding some code to create uh, these categories, right? Then we have all the functions here, right? So let's try to cover all the functions one by one. So I don't want to consume your time by typing all these codes. So what I can do, I can expedite the process by typing poster, and then I, I will uh, explain all the lines one by one.
All right, so let's walk through all the functions one by one, right? To create the category, you can see we have the, the CC stands for our uh, catalog repository. And catalog repository, we have the DB, right? This DB reference from our Go ORM DB, right? And uh, by calling that DB, all right, the Go ORM DB, simply we are creating this uh, particular record by calling this create function, right? And this create function is taking kind of a, a input as a kind of interface. And that interface we are pointing to our, our domain uh, category interface. That is, we are assigning to E, right? E, e for entity, you can say, or any kind of variable name, you can put it right here. And finally, once we are creating this function, right? And once we are creating this record, then we are we need to look into the error also. By calling this error function, we are assigning right here. So we are checking it out whether we have any error, right? If we have any error, then we are simply logging it right here. And you can see I'm using some kind of T tag. So this tag exactly it's going to be helpful for uh, segregating this error uh, by categorize the error, whether it is DB error, API error, third party error, or something error, or any kind of error it is exactly. And we are assigning this error uh, here, right? And because why we are logging here, we are not returning this actual error to our users. So then uh, the user will get to know what kind of database we are using inside and what exactly is happening uh, underneath of this uh, particular uh, function, right? So that is uh, for security reason, we can just uh, keep it all these things, uh, actual error to uh, logging to your logger tool, right? So later stage, we are going to replace with some kind of uh, logger tool, just like Grafana or maybe some some other tool like CloudWatch Logs or something we can use. But as of now, let's keep it this way. And we are returning this uh, some kind of meaningful error to our user, right? So uh, eventually we are just creating the record, handling the error, returning this one as a nil, right? If it is nil, then we are assuming this uh, uh, this record is created successfully. And the similar way for the find categories, we are, you can see we are uh, declaring a bunch of uh, the array of pointers. That pointer will be our category pointer, right? And then we are trying to find it out all the categories. This find function, it is going to return a bunch of arrays of interface. You can see like this, right? And uh, and eventually we are looking for the error. If we have error, then we are we are handling it here, right? And if it is if it is no error or uh, error is nil, then returning these categories, right? That is assigning right here. While we are performing this find function, then um, the result will be assigned here, right? And this is the way we are we are handling this pine categories function. And you might have thinking like why we are logging here and throwing the error here is no error. It doesn't make sense at all. Like uh, if we are don't have any kind of data right here for categories, right? Then it's not, uh, this is not actual error. Data is not there, data is empty. That's why we are returning it here. But but it's, it's up to you. You can go for it and you can log it and you can return uh, some kind of uh, meaningful error also. That's also gonna work, right? Here in the pine category by ID, we are doing the same kind of operation just like pine categories, right? So here simply we are uh, defining our category here, right? One single item. And this first function is going to return only one single item from that query, right? And here, this is the condition. So condition is uh, GoORM is smart enough to, to, to tackle it. If we are providing ID, it will going to assume that we are trying to find it out uh, by that particular model ID, right? And as an example, select start from the category where uh, the category ID equal to this ID. Or other way around also, you can assign this condition, something like this, ID equal like this, and you can define the ID here, right? So it could have meaningful on the, uh, the other case in terms of if we have a name, then we could have done like this, right? But for ID or something else, then let's go with this pattern, right? So this is really shortcut. And finally, where we are trying to find it out the uh, the the category by by ID, and we are assigning to this category to this uh, this variable, right? And we are handling this error here, and we are returning this category from here, right? So in the edit category, we are simply saving the data by pointing to that uh, uh, that interface, right? This interface is uh, domain dot category, and we are assigning to this E, right? And we are saving this data, right? DB saved this E, right? And once this save, uh, save operation is done, then what it is going to do, it is going to return that particular updated data to this uh, on this interface, because it's, we are pointing to here, right? And eventually we are handling this, uh, all the errors, if, if any kind of errors are there, then we are handling it and returning it error, error message and logging it all as well as. And uh, if there is no error, then we are returning the updated data here, 
right? And the delete category is simply we are deleting the category. How we are doing? We are accepting some kind of input right there. That is called our uh, category ID. And we are deleting what? We are deleting the uh, particular uh, interface that, that interface is category, right? And what condition exactly? Condition by ID, right? So that means delete from our delete from the category where ID equal to this ID, something like that, right? And eventually we are handling this uh, error and we are returning nil. If if there is any error while we are while we are not be able to delete the data, then we are returning it. Otherwise, return nil. Cool. So I hope we have uh, handled everything, right? So in the repository perspective, uh, the category operations is handled, right? Now let's go to our catalog service, and and here we're going to add some functions, which is going to uh, tackle all this all these database calls, right? 